so this this actually started as a rant about one thing and it turned into a rant about three things because that's the kind of crap that shows up in my inbox um and i just i get so frustrated like what do we have to do to educate the veterinary community what Ugh! what do we have to do and actually i have a lot of veterinarians who follow me and for those of you who are veterinarians or vet techs who follow me thank you so much because we need to make changes within the profession and the only way we can do it is to get freaking educated so oh i'll start with my consultation today and i told her i was going to do a rant about this so her dog is three years old and started having seizures in february guess what drug her dog has been getting every month i bet y'all can figure it out and i said every month so that takes one of them off the table right there yeah you never know when i'm going to be on because i never know when i'm going to be on it is like uh, yeah, where where TF did they get their education? Well, I can tell you where they're getting their education. They're getting their education from Big Pharma and Big Food, and it makes me mad. And we're going to talk about both of those tonight. So, Big Pharma, we've got this dog who's having seizures. Pretty much every once a month, although they're ramping up a little bit, and now they're like every three weeks instead of once a month, and this started in February. So, great owner. She took the dog to the emergency service when the first one happened, had a workup done, went to a regular vet, had some more work done. She tested for everything, tested for Lyme, tested for heartworm and, and tick-borne diseases, tested zinc levels, tested um, CBC, chem, urine, thyroid, all normal, good owner. Went to the neurologist, really worried about her dog, had an MRI, had a spinal tap, did the whole nine yards. Everything comes back fine. So they say, Oh, your dog has idiopathic epilepsy. Do you know what idiopathic means? Idiopathic means we're idiots and we can't find a reason. That's what it means. I was actually taught that in school. If you label something idiopathic, it means you're an idiot. You haven't been able to figure it out. And we have a lot of diseases that we call idiopathic because we don't know what causes them. We're figuring things out slowly through time, but we don't know. So this dog got labeled as idiopathic epilepsy. Well, the dog's been on NexGuard for years. And guess what? The neurotoxin finally got to the dog. Dog's having seizures. You know what the neurologist said to that? Can't possibly be related to that because of the timing. Yeah, because it didn't happen within 24 hours of giving the drug, so it can't possibly be related. Or perhaps the dog's neuro neurologic system finally said, I give up. I'm done, I can't do this anymore. So the dog's having seizures. So the owner being the good owner that, I mean, she's a wonderful owner. Being the good owner that she is, she says, okay, well, I've worked up everything else. So I don't see, you know, I don't know what to treat here. The dog was on dry kibble and she said, well, and she did a lot of research and she just, you know, found things that said, oh, rosemary can contribute to seizures. Peas can contribute to seizures. Chicken and turkey can contribute to seizures. I mean, some good information, some bad information. So, but God bless her, she's been doing a lot of research. So um, she wanted to get the dog off dry kibble and put it on a, a homemade diet to support the body and hopefully decrease the seizures. And she wanted to figure out what supplements she could use to help the dog. That's how she ended up with me. And a pet store owner was actually uh, how she found me. So thank you to the pet store owner. A lot of you pet store owners are really helpful. So, um, so she decided she wanted to take the dog off of the chemicals and she read my book, this one, From Needles to Natural. So she switched her heart guard to interceptor and she stopped the next guard on her own. So she said to her veterinarian and to the neurologist, hey, what can I use for natural flea and tick prevention instead of using the next guard? Because everything I read says you shouldn't give next guard to a dog that's having seizures. You'll love the answer, guys. You're gonna love the answer and you're going to wonder why there's not steam coming out of both of my ears and why my nostrils aren't flaring. Well, they are. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so the veterinarian calls the neurologist because nobody knows how to naturally prevent flea and ticks. And she's really not even worried about the ticks so much as the fleas because she lives in the South. 
So, and she's never had a flea problem, but the dog's been on Mexicard forever. So, nobody can give her an answer on anything natural to use. Of course not! Why would they be able to do that? Because why would you research anything other than big pharma? So, the veterinarian calls the neurologist. And do you know what the neurologist told her to use for flea and tick prevention and heartworm prevention? The neurologist said, Brevecto and Nexgard are just fine. You can give the dog the Nexgard or you can switch over to Brevecto. That'll be just fine. I don't think it's related to his seizures at all. Oh, but make sure for heartworm preventative, you don't use Trifexis because that might contribute to seizures. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me? Where, where is she learning this stuff? So, and the veterinarian agrees and says, yeah, it's fine for you to use Brevecto and Nexgard. And then they prescribed Keppra for the seizures. Really? Really? Read the freaking label. The label says, well, actually, I think the label says something like use with caution in dogs that have, seizure, have a history of seizures. With caution. How about not freaking at all? Like, what? 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 So, uh, they're so brainwashed by Big Pharma that they're prescribing Brevecto and Nexgard for dogs with seizures. Prescribing it. Like, uh, yes, there's steam coming out my eyes. <laughs> so, but watch out for Trifexis. Might be a problem. So, she switched her dog to Sentinel, and she's using natural flea and tick prevention. She's detoxing the liver, and now she's going through the entire detox protocol for dogs that have been poisoned by these neurotoxins. Yeah, Hugh's going to start shaking. Uh, very soon. Very soon. <laughs> so, that's rant number one. Because one was not enough for today, because my inbox was loaded with more crap than I know what to do with today. Oh, let's see. There was the dog that had a free catch urine with a pH of 6.5 that, actually, this is the fourth rant that um, had no crystals, no bacteria, no white cells, no red cells. Uh, oh, sorry. No red cells, no white cells, normal pH, but had a few bacteria on the microscopic exam. Free catch sample. Dog got two weeks of antibiotics. No culture, no white cells, no red cells, no raised pH. But we saw a couple bacteria. It was a freaking free catch urine. It went through the dirty hair. O M. G. So, you know, now we've got dysbiosis, microbiome totally screwed up. We got to start all over. Like, come on. So then I get another email. Dog had, actually, the email was about the dog has uh, newly diagnosed heart disease. And so they wanted to know about supplements and diet and, and said, you know, I'm assuming I have to switch off the dry kibble that the dog is eating because it's probably not so great for the heart disease. And it's on, it's been on urinary SO ever since it had bladder stones removed two years ago. Well, yeah, SO is not a good diet for, um, well, for anything, including stones, uh, but really not good for a dog with heart disease. So I said, well, what kind of stones did the dog have? Because that kind of plays into, yeah, face plant. What kind of stones did the dog have? Because, you know, we might have to change the diet, depending. Well, they were struvite stones. Okay, veterinarian, wake up and smell the coffee. When you take struvite stones out, that is not an excuse. Or when you see struvite crystals in the urine, that is not an excuse for selling a prescription diet and padding the income of the clinic. Struvite stones are caused by urinary tract infections and high pH. So... Here's a thought. We'll get rid of the stones. Step one. Good. Did that. Step two. Let's do a culture. Let's treat with the appropriate antibiotic. Let's do follow-up urines and make sure that the dog does not have recurring infections and the dog will never make another stone again. The dog does not have to be sentenced to a life of low quality, horrible food that the owner is paying through the nose for that is just god awful. So, Hopefully that poor dog is now going to be on a real, I gave, I gave them some really nice food companies that I really like and said, these will be much better. And then these are the heart supplements that we'll add. And, and by the way, like, just 
you don't, you don't need a prescription diet. Your dog had true bite stones. Could you monitor the urine? Let's make sure that we don't have urinary tract infections. Like stay on top of that because you don't want to have stones again. But that's how we manage that. Why? Why? You know why? Big pharma, big pet food, traditional teaching. Hey, here's the easy answer. Just put them on this food that's loaded with salt, by the way, to make them drink more. Oh, wait, the dog's got heart disease. Hmm, food loaded with salt. Probably not the best choice. OMG. So then I get another one. We just Now we're on to number four. So number four, I thought it was just your profession. <laughs> you couldn't make up crap. Apparently vets were able to make up their own crap. To, oh, yeah. Why won't people and brainwash vets not wake up? I don't know. So I got another email and I can't remember the whole story on this one because there's been so many today. I'm just, I'm just like trying to climb up out of the hole today. Um, so the dog doesn't do well on flea and tick and heartworm medications, has struggled with, uh, with chemicals in the past. Hmm. Well, maybe we need to get away from the chemicals for one thing. Uh, so the veterinarian prescribed something called Synergy, which I had to look up. I'd never even heard of it. Well, it's a Selamectin product, so that, you know it's it's off patent, so we get all these weird brands. Um, it's Selamectin, which I don't recommend using at all. But because the dog doesn't do well with it, the veterinarian split the dose and has them give half one week and the other half the next week. That's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No. The dog doesn't do well with the drug, get off the drug. Find another way around this. Find a natural way, find something. The dog's not doing well with the drug. Get a different way to deal with it. Splitting it, dumb. Like, dumb. Like, why would you, let's, let's say you're using Interceptor or HeartGuard. Why would you give half of it one week and the other half the next week? Like, So my rant today is that veterinarians would take the time to actually read the inserts on the drugs that they're prescribing. That veterinarians would actually educate themselves about the side effects of every... Now, maybe, maybe I have a little bit more of an interest in this than the average Joe veterinarian because I taught pharmacology for quite a few years at the college for the vet techs. So, you know, when you teach pharmacology, you have to learn all the side effects of everything, which, by the way, we have to learn in school anyway, but then we just put it on the shelf and go, eh, eh. You know, drug interactions, side effects. We probably should know that, and we probably should inform our clients and say, hey, I'm prescribing this medication. By the way, it might cause kidney failure, liver failure, GI ulceration. Could you watch out for these symptoms? At which point the client may go, oh, wait a minute, you want me to give my dog something that could cause liver failure, kidney failure, and GI ulcers? Um, let me think about that for a minute. Got any other options? Like if, if we stepped up to the plate and said, or even if it print, we don't even have to say it, it could print out on your receipt. You know, the computer programs, you can put in there what you, like you can put a message that's connected almost always with steroids, there will be a message on the receipt that says, your dog has been prescribed a steroid medication. It may cause increased thirst and urination. So that you know about that. Okay, with all these other drugs, we should have little printouts. Let's make it easy on ourselves. Just plug it all in the computer. And every time you prescribe a drug, you know when you go to the pharmacy and you pick up a drug and they, they make you sign that little thing and they hand you the piece of paper that says, here's all the side effects to watch out for. Every time my mom would come home from the doctors with my dad and they, she'd say, well, they want to prescribe another medication. He was on 30, by the way. Um, and she'd come home with a new prescription and I'm like, did, you, did they tell you what the side effects or interactions might be? Well, no. And I would always look them up. And then I'd go, yeah, we're not giving that one. Oh, by the way, that one interacts with those two. I'm sorry, guys. You are going to have to take charge. You are going to have to do the homework. You are going to have to ask questions. And anytime you get a prescription, look it up. Look it up online. Drugs.com, great place to look things up online. 
PetMD, WebMD, like, look them up. Look them up. Learn what it is that you're giving. Know what the side effects are. Know what to watch for. Be educated because I'm telling you, they're in a rush because they're there's not enough veterinary, we are in a veterinary shortage, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Kind of like the rest of the world with everything, well, a shortage of toilet paper, a shortage of paper towels, a shortage of meat, a shortage of canned goods, I don't know, shortage of veterinarians, it's just short everything. So, I don't, you know, we don't expect the veterinary problem to get better in the next 10 years. So, you are going to have to take charge and keep your pets safe. So, ugh, ask questions, ask questions, and if you're getting prescribed a prescription diet, ask why. What's what's the special secret sauce in there that is going to make a huge difference? What's the secret sauce? Because you know what? In SO, it's methionine to lower the pH and salt to make them drink a lot. Kind of dumb. Like, let's feed them real food. Yeah, and then the whole Soresto thing. <laughs> we, we won't go back to that today. <laughs>